<laughs> hey friends, you landed here because you are dealing with horrible hip pain and you want to get out of pain and I have the solution for you. My name is Yogi Aaron. Welcome. Let's dive into this practice and explore muscle activation practices to get you out of hip pain. Hey guys, if you like this video, please remember to hit the like button, click the subscribe to stay up to date and get more videos from me as well as that notification bell. And most importantly, leave me some comments below and tell me how these practices are working for you. Tell me about experiences where you've been stretching and it isn't helping you. Hip pain can result from many different muscles not working. And in this hip pain series, we're going through some of the major muscles that may be causing you hip pain. So in day three, for example, we looked at the glute med muscle, but one of the other muscles I talked about was the piriformis, which is a hip rotator muscle. Well, there's other hip rotator muscles. One of them is called the quadratus femoris. So what we're gonna do today is do some muscle activations to get those hip rotators working properly and they're surprisingly very simple. So let's just dive into it and practice getting our hip rotators working. One of the most important things to remember when we're looking at improving muscle function is what is the function of muscles? So muscles basically do two things. I know they do a lot of other things, but they basically do these two things at the top of the list. Muscles move bones and muscles stabilize joints. And usually they do both of those functions together through different ranges of motion. So for example, a lot of you, when you're walking, maybe you're going shopping or out with your friends, walking around, doing a beer crawl or something, what you might start to notice is that your lower back starts to hurt, your hips hurt, your knees hurt. Well, the muscles that are surrounding those joints are not working properly. Why are they not working? Because of stress, trauma, and overuse. So if we want to improve the function of those muscles, we need to practice doing just very simple isometrics. That's really it in a nutshell. So what we're doing here is we're doing isometrics to target certain muscles to improve the muscle function so that they can start to stabilize the joints of our body as we go through life and use our body, really. <laughs> All right, so coming onto your back, what I'd like you to do is to bring the right knee up. Now, the right knee wants to be stacked over the right hip, okay? And keep that knee stacked over the hip. Now you're going to bring that right hand to the right knee to keep it stabilized and then bring that foot as far as you can over the left knee, over the left leg. Do not move the right knee as you're doing that and you're probably gonna start feeling a lot of muscles working and then just relax, okay? And let's do it again. Bring the right knee over the hip and then you're gonna bring that right foot over the left knee, okay? So you might even feel some of your adductors working. There's definitely adductors working here but you're also really working the hip rotators, primarily the quadratus femoris. And then bring the foot back down. Let's do it again. Bring the knee back up, bring the foot over the left side. Yahoo! <laughs> and then bring the foot back down and bring the leg back up and let's do it again. All right. So you're working the quadratus femoris. You're probably working a few other muscles as well, like I said, as the adductors, and then bring that foot back down. And we'll do it one more time. Bring the knee back up, bring the foot over, and there you go. You might even notice that the foot is coming more towards you. That's because the muscles are contracting in a better way. Bring the foot down. Let's do the same on the left side. So bring the left leg up. Now bring that left hand to the knee. Again, the hand on the knee is just to stabilize it because I don't want the knee to move around. We wanna create a block on that knee. Then you're gonna bring the left foot across the right thigh and holding it there, two, three, four, five, and six. And then bring the leg back, just relax it. 
bring the knee back, bring the foot over, or across that thigh. Nice. And two, three, four, five, and six. And then relax. And bring the knee back up. Bring the foot across the thigh and holding it for two, three, four, five, and six. And then relax. And let's do it again. Bring the knee up. Bring the foot across the right thigh, holding it two, three, four, five, and six. And then back down. And then bring the knee up. Bring the foot across the thigh, holding it for two, three, four, five, and six. And then back. And then bring the knee up. And bring the foot across the thigh. Very good. All right. So now we finished those. Let's do our two other muscle activations that we do every, every video, every practice to get the glutes working and the psoas working. Why is it important to get these two muscles working? Because they're the biggest muscle groups in their range of motion. So with the psoas, they're the biggest muscle and the most important muscle in regards to hip flexion and the glutes are the most and biggest important muscle for hip extension. If those two muscles aren't working, it's gonna create a lot of stress on the other smaller muscles. If these muscles are working, sometimes it will have a more positive effect on the smaller muscles and they will actually improve their function, all right? So let's hit the glutes first. So bring the arms out to the sides, squeeze the glutes and lift up the hips as high as you can. Holding it two, three, four, five, six, and come on back down. And we're gonna come on back up again. Very good. And back down. And as you come up, see if you can start to isolate with your mind's eye the fibers of the glutes. Tell your glutes to contract and see if you can feel them contracting, feel or sense all the little muscle spindles of the glutes like firing up, coiling up, and then relax down, and then come on up. So an interesting thing about the glutes is that they're the opposite muscle to the psoas. So a lot of people are stretching out their psoas because it's tight, which is the absolute worst thing that you can do. Best thing you can do if you want your psoas to release or relax, get the glutes working because they're opposite muscles. So when one muscle is contracting, the opposite muscle relaxes. Let's do it one more time. Lift up. Squeeze the glutes, push down into the heels of the feet. Maybe lift the toes just a little bit. Lift up a little bit more and then come on down. All right, so let's do our muscle activation for the psoas major. So from here, we're gonna cross the right ankle, cross the left knee, bring the left hand towards the right knee, and just press that knee into the hand. There you go. And this starts to activate the psoas because you're bringing the psoas isometrically into a shortened state and holding it there for a moment, and then relax, and do it again. Very nice. And then relax. If you do these hip practices, these hip muscle activation practices, do it again, you're gonna notice that your hips start to get more, if you wanna use this word flexible, a better word to use is range of motion. Your range of motion improves. And relax and do it again. And two, three, four, five, six and relax and do it again and relax and one more time pushing the knee into the hand and relax let's do the other side now so bring the left ankle across the right knee and bring that right hand towards the left knee and again, you're going to push the left knee into the hand, holding it for two, three, 
four, five, six, and relax. And we'll do it a few more times, all right? So by isometrically engaging the muscles, we start to improve the connection between the brain and the muscle. And relax and do it again. Very nice. And relax and do it again. And relax and do it again. Very good. And that's it, my friends. We have started to work on improving hip rotation. We've gotten the glutes engaged today and the psoas. Remember to follow up with tomorrow because tomorrow we get into some very important hip flexors. You're gonna notice that as these muscles get stronger, as they're able to improve their ability to contract and contract on demand, that you begin to become pain-free. Why? Because there's less stress that's being inflicted on your joints. As stress reduces, the inflammation reduces, and not only do you have pain-free hips, but you have more range of motion and you will feel stronger. So go out to enjoy your best day. Fact or fiction? These are some of the questions that you probably have as you're looking at so much of the information that's out there. Well, I've started a series called the Stretching Police Series where we go in and we look at what some of the people are doing out there, some of the claims that people are making about solutions to pain. Is it fact or is it fiction? What can you take and what should you throw away? So join me in the stretching police and remember to like and comment in this video below so that I know how these videos are affecting you in living your best pain-free life.